What's going on everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder and today we have a Spider-Man plot leak that a lot of people have sent me and it is the most detailed plot leak that I have ever seen since doing YouTube. Now this caught my attention because as I mentioned a few videos ago, a couple of insiders have told me about a few plot details that are confirmed to be true coming up in Spider-Man No Way Home. I did a video on what those are, I shared them with you, and you can find those actually in this plot plot leak. But in this plot leak sense, they're actually tied into the story. Now, of course, with all plot leaks, we take them with a grain of salt. But like I just said, there are some points in this plot leak that I know are confirmed to be true. Now, this was posted online, apparently by somebody who works at Marvel Studios. They claim that they haven't actually seen the movie, but they have read the script. And they say they posted this because they're tired of waiting. And I think we're all tired of waiting. And if that is true, that kind of indicates that it's Sony's fault to blame for us not getting the trailer yet, which I kind of think everybody figured anyways. So like I said, it's insanely detailed. It's incredibly long. So we're just going to dive into it. It sounds really awesome. Is it true or not? Not sure, but there are a lot of true things in there that I can confirm. And if you like plot leaks and keeping up to date with the MCU, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. All right, this is divided into three acts and I'm just going to read it word for word as it is. And at the end, I'll talk about it. The first scene takes place in an abandoned building somewhere in New York at night. A group of teenagers is exploring this abandoned building for a live stream they're doing. They talk about how the place is supposedly haunted. They eventually encounter a mysterious figure stumbling out of the darkness, clad in green armor but injured. The teenagers are scared, but they attempt to mock the figure, but they run as soon as the figure starts walking towards them. The figure is none other than Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin wearing his armor from the 2002 Spider-Man movie, but without the helmet. An extended version of the breaking news report from the ending of Far From Home plays over the Marvel Studios logo. Then we see a montage of screens broadcasting the same video we saw at the ending of Far From Home when Mysterio exposes Peter Parker as Spider-Man and, of course, J.K. Simmons' new version of J. Jonah Jameson. Spider-Man is holding his head in panic, just as he was at the end of Far From Home. He looks back at MJ and then back at the screen. We then see the reactions of various people. We see Flash Thompson drop a snack from his mouth as he's watching, surprised at the fact that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Ned is with his mother, just as shocked. Spider-Man swings away as people look at him, telling MJ to meet him back at Queens. Aunt May frantically calls him about what's happening. Spidey tells her that he'll be home soon and that they should move away as he fears there might be a mob that will attack their home. Peter arrives at their apartment building in Queens and they talk about what to do, calling Happy. Obviously, Aunt May, Ned, and MJ know that Peter is innocent. They also attempt to contact Nick Fury, but he doesn't answer because he's in space. Then there's a joke about Nick ghosting Peter back for not answering his calls in Far From Home. Peter tells Aunt May that they may have time to figure things out since Peter Parker was just a normal teenager, so not many people will know where he lives anyway, but then they just suddenly hear a bunch of people gathered outside yelling at them, including Brad Davis and a few other students from Peter's school who probably led the mob to his home. Happy attempts to pick Peter and May up from their apartment, but the people in front of the apartment building are getting in his way. Peter sees Happy outside the window, gesturing for them to get back down. Peter quickly changes to his civilian outfit, goes back down with May, and confronts the mob, pretending to not know what the hell is happening. Brad Davis calls him out that he should know what's happening since his face was just broadcast all over the world. Happy comes out of his car and escorts them to the car. Inside the car, they discuss what to do. Happy suggests hiring a lawyer so they can settle this legally as there's really nothing else they can do at this point. May says she might know someone. She pulls out her phone and starts contacting a lawyer. We cut to a courthouse. Peter is on trial. The lawyer is none other than Matt Murdock, played by Charlie Cox. The witness is one of Mysterio's accomplices. The court battle gets heated as the accomplice presents new evidence showing a more convincing footage of Peter killing Mysterio that was not shown to the public. It's a video that was edited to make it look like Peter shot Mysterio at point blank. They also mentioned that the video has been examined for any sign of fakery, but none was found. Matt attempts to speak back, but he was cut off by the judge and branded guilty. Matt tells Peter that he'll find a way to fix this because he knows that Peter is innocent, but also subtly implies that he knows he's also Spider-Man. This is the last that we see of Matt Murdock. Peter is arrested and he tells Aunt May that he has no choice but to serve a sentence and assures her that he'll be fine. We see a shot of Peter in a police car looking out to the crowd as people yell, Spider-Man is a murderer. 
Peter spends a day in prison being bullied by other inmates, but he wouldn't fight back. In his cell, a tiny portal opens in front of him, and a piece of paper comes out of it. The paper reads, 177A Bleecker Street. Hurry. And we've definitely seen that before. But Peter escapes through the barred window by breaking the bars and crawling out. Ned and MJ are at May's house to accompany her so that she wouldn't be lonely. Peter comes in through the window. May, Ned, and MJ are surprised and happy that Peter escaped, but also concerned as that would ruin his reputation even further. Peter tells them that Doctor Strange is calling for him and he'll be going there. Ned and MJ ask to go with him. He disagrees, but eventually they all go together. They arrive and look around at the place, and they look up to see Doctor Strange dramatically floating down the stairs. And this is the picture that was officially released where Tom, Zendaya, and Jacob are looking up. He leads them to a room with an orb in the middle, with vein-like trails all over the area. He explains that the flow of time has somehow been disturbed and that many realities are starting to bleed into each other. And obviously with Loki, we know this to be true. Strange tells Peter that two timelines are merging into their own, but with the orb that he apparently dug up from somewhere, it has the ability to slow down the merging process. Peter asks Strange why he called on him, and not somebody else, and Strange says that he is somehow the center of the current problem he's dealing with, a problem that's part of an even bigger problem. Strange says that he can't leave the Sanctum because he has to keep reality stable. And this is very difficult now as all the Infinity Stones have been destroyed so he has to rely on pure magic. It is from here that Strange starts to warn Peter about the villains and he reveals that the villains are taken from various points of the timeline of the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield movies as timelines. To make sure that Peter is up for the task, Strange teleports Peter's iron spider suit to the Sanctum and combines it with magic, turning it into an integrated suit. He tells Peter that it'll allow him to use magic that will allow him to put the villains in stasis and put them back into the Sanctum so Strange can bring them back to their respective universes and timelines. And Peter actually ends up capturing the villains and bringing them back to the Sanctum. But Peter was injured fighting Doc Ock. While recovering, Peter talks to Sandman and learns that back in his reality, his daughter Penny is sick and that he's only been doing everything he can to save her. Peter recognizes the name and asks him if her last name is Marco, to which he says yes. Peter tells him that he knows a girl named Penny Marco in his school who was happy and was the survivor of sickness and that her father Flint died during a bank robbery in an attempt to get money to save her. He reveals that his name is also Flint and sheds a tear. Peter then asks him what the Peter in his world is like and he tells him that he only fought him once inside an armored vehicle. May ends up at the Sanctum as well, and Ned, MJ, Peter, and her spend the night there. Suddenly, they hear an explosion where the villains are imprisoned. Peter rushes back to where the villains are and found that most of them have escaped except for Sandman, who looks at him and says sorry before disappearing. Strange was caught off guard and injured by the explosion and says that the event has worsened the reality state. Strange tells Peter not to go after them while injured, but of course, Peter puts on the integrated suit and he goes and leaves. He ends up fighting them all, except for Sandman who is really trying his best not to hurt him. But the other villains try and kill him. Spider-Man ends up crashing into a rooftop, completely battered more than he ever was before. Then a figure in green armor and a purple hoodie approaches him. He takes off his hood, revealing him to be Norman Osborn of the Sam Raimi universe. And here's where things actually start to get pretty intense. We find out that he was taken from the Sam Raimi universe right before the glider ran into him and killed him, but he was actually sent to the past of the MCU, the main sacred timeline. From there, he actually murdered the current Norman Osborn, preventing Oscorp from existing in the MCU. Instead of turning Oscorp into a big name, he instead waited for the right time to strike. At first, he thought the MCU didn't have a Spider-Man, but later found out about his existence because of the events of Homecoming and Far From Home. Norman prepares to kill him as he has learned his lesson not to let Spider-Man live and get in his way. But right before he goes to kill him, Spider-Man is saved by none other than Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. He grabs him and takes him back to the Sanctum. And apparently, that's the end of Act 1, and now we go into Act 2. Back at the Sanctum, Ned, MJ, and Aunt May are surprised to see another Spider-Man carrying Peter. We find out that Andrew Spider-Man has actually been in the MCU for a few months, and Doctor Strange says that he used a forgotten spell that's able to pull people from other universes into the MCU. While the Breach can do this as well by random, his spell allows him to specifically choose people to bring over, and he chose to bring over Andrew Spider-Man for help. Meanwhile, the Sinister Six have formed and they now have a base. Sandman wants to actually go back to his universe, but the others state that they die in their own universes and no longer have a purpose there. They're going to attack the Sanctum, kill Strange, both Spider-Man, and take the orb. However, Strange finds this out as he was spying on them via astral projection. 
Back at the Sanctum, the group asks Andrew Spider-Man a bunch of questions. Ned states that they don't look anything alike, but of course we know that they don't have to because of the Loki series. The two of them start to bond and Peter tells the other Peter how he went to space. But then mid-conversation, they are interrupted by Strange returning to the Sanctum, telling them that they need to prepare for an attack. Strange says that'll help as much as he can, but he can't give Spider-Man any more of his magic. From here, Peter calls Happy, telling him that they need better suits. Happy heads over to the Sanctum, but meanwhile, Spider-Man's reputation is further damaged after his escape from prison. And in school, Flash is actually the one being bullied for supporting Spider-Man. Happy gets to the Sanctum, and both Spider-Man get new suits. Tom Holland, Spider-Man, Rocky the black and gold one that we've seen. MJ and Peter have a moment and they share a kiss. We then cut to New York City at sunset. We see a young woman being mugged by a thug played by Harry Holland, Tom Holland's brother. But the thug is webbed up by Toby Maguire Spider-Man. Toby asks if she's okay and then takes a break at a rooftop nearby. He takes off his mask and then he gets a call from Kristen Dunst's MJ. It cuts to their living room where she is caring for their daughter named Mae Parker. They start talking about Toby's decision of retiring as Spider-Man as other heroes are now appearing in his world. Toby arrives home, plays with his daughter, and then talks with MJ about how he needs to be there more for his daughter. He promises to take it easy now, and we also see a newspaper that seemingly implies that the events of the cancelled Spider-Man 4 movie actually happened in the universe. And now, on to the final act, Act 3. Norman Osborn approaches the entrance of the Sanctum at midnight, knowing that Strange is expecting him. He talks about how this new world is his chance to be bigger than he was in his other universe. The Sinister Six start attacking the Sanctum, but it is seemingly empty. Then Tom Holland's Peter Parker jumps out of a dark spot and kicks Electro in the head. Then the two Spider-Men start to fight the Sinister Six. Andrew has a rematch against the Lizard, but Doctor Strange ends up getting knocked unconscious due to him being weakened from trying to bind reality from breaking. This is a huge fight and it ends up with both the Spider-Men injured, but they were able to subdue Lizard, Scorpion, Vulture, and Doc Ock. Tom attempts to capture Norman, but Norman catches him off guard and stabs him with a blade through the shoulder. However, Sandman betrays Norman and attacks him. Sandman is then killed after Norman detonated what seems to be a pumpkin bomb filled with fluid. As it turned out, Norman had a contingency plan in case the other villains tried to betray him. Tom tries to attack him again, but then Norman summons a new glider. Both the Spider-Man put up a fight, but ultimately they are no match against him. With both Spider-Man knocked down and almost knocked down for good, MJ attacks Norman Osborn with a metal pipe. But it doesn't hurt him, and he turns to her, grabs her by the neck, and throws her across the room. Tom screams, but is knocked down by Norman with one punch. Norman then goes to the room where Strange's body is, and the two of them have a conversation, and Norman tells Strange that he spent too much time on trying to maintain reality that has been severely weakened. Norman goes for the kill, but Strange lets go of the orb and fights Norman, but not before doing a brief spell on the orb that makes it glow red briefly. Norman is no match against Strange, but Electro then appears and takes the orb while Strange is distracted. Strange attempts to cast a portal in front of Electro as he escapes, but Norman grabs Strange and throws him against a wall. When Strange gets back up, Norman and Electro have disappeared. Tom cradles MJ, who is severely bleeding, mirroring the scene where Andrew lost Gwen in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Andrew takes off his mask in shock, and MJ dies. Ned and May counsel Tom, but Strange tells them that they've escaped with the orb. However, Strange has brought in one last backup, even though it isn't much. Andrew's Spider-Man tells Peter how he lost Gwen in his own universe. Then Peter shares how he lost Tony Stark. They then talk about how being Spider-Man will always lead to suffering, but they must persevere. Back in the Raimi universe, Toby's Spider-Man is telling a speech to his daughter about how he'll think she'll grow up to be somebody wonderful. But then a portal opens up behind him and Mary Jane also walks into the room. The final fight is against the Sinister Six and the three Spider-Man. The fight ends up with Norman Osborn attempting to bring back more versions of the Sinister Six from other universes, but all three Spider-Man gang up on him. The other two Spider-Man attempt to hold back the Sinister Six, while Tom Spider-Man attempts to use the orb to bring everybody back to their respective timelines. However, Norman Osborn has been tinkering with it and has damaged it because it's overloaded with energy, and using it risks destroying it. Portals start to appear in the sky. Buildings, cars, and even people start falling from them. Tom's Peter Parker successfully sends all the villains and the other two Spider-Man back to their respective timelines. Norman is put back in the last second before he's impaled by his glider. Luckily, the orb didn't break, but it's heavily cracked. 
Peter then thinks about using the orb to bring MJ back to life and get his secret identity back. Strange warns him not to do that, but Tom doesn't listen and he does it anyways. The orb then breaks and Peter looks around as something has happened, similar to when Thanos snapped his fingers. Doctor Strange asks, what have you done? And the screen fades to white. We cut to Tom in his bed. He greets Aunt May good morning and heads to school. At school, he sees Ned and they see MJ walk past the hallway, but she doesn't recognize them. She also seems more popular than before. Peter sees her and becomes sad seeing her, but Ned doesn't. He just says that she's out of their league. Then Tom walks out of a classroom after class and bumps into a blonde girl. They say sorry to each other and make eye contact. Cut to black while we hear Tom ask what the girl's name is and the movie ends. Now, as you can see, this is just absolutely insane. And it does actually sound like what the movie could be. But you'll have to let me know your thoughts on this. I definitely hate the ending. I don't like that MJ dies. And then all of a sudden, the MCU is altered to where MJ doesn't know who Peter is. But let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Do you like this? Do you not like this? Do you think this could be real? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe subscribe and for live updates you can always follow me on instagram and twitter as always thank you all so much for watching woof woof